Hello folks, my name is Patrick and I'll be your presenter for this video. Today we'll be looking at aripiprazole and what you should know as a patient taking it or as a healthcare professional handling it. Let's get started. So what is aripiprazole anyway? Well, it might be a little hard to say for its generic name, but uh, you probably have heard of the brand name Abilify or the injectable brand name Abilify Maintena. This drug comes in tablets, solutions, or even powders, which are stored in little vials that get dissolved in liquid for injection. Uh, it's used in the treatment of mental conditions, namely bipolar disorder and schizophrenia, uh, among other things. Interestingly, in 2017, Otsuka Pharmaceuticals, uh, the original makers in collaboration with Proteus Digital Health, got FDA approval for a new Abilify product, which would be Abilify MySight, which are tablets with small embedded sensors that work together with a patch and a smartphone app to help keep track of when you take the medication. When taking traditional tablets, you can take aripiprazole by mouth or with or without food. With MySight tablets, however, you do need to swallow them whole uh, in order to avoid excessive damage to the sensors. Uh, the further instructions for MySight tablets can be found on the proprietary smartphone app, which you will need a modern compatible smartphone for. Uh, this can be downloaded on the Google Play Store for Android users and the Apple App Store for iOS users. If you are receiving an injectable form of Abilify, you'll want to inject intramuscularly into the areas directed by your prescriber. This is typically around your shoulder or the muscles near the back of your hips. When storing Abilify, all of the various forms can be stored at room temperature, away from light, humidity, and of course, children. All right, let's talk side effects. The side effects that you can experience while taking Abilify includes, but is not limited to, this list right here. Yeah, you might not even experience most of these while taking it, which is a good sign. This might be a great choice for you if you need to try a stronger dose. Listed here, you can see that some muscle-related side effects are expected, alongside a coin flip between insomnia and or slowing things down with sedation. You can also probably expect the typical ones you'll see with most drugs. We're talking things like constipation, fatigue, blurred vision, nausea, diarrhea, the usual suspects. It's worth noting, however, that aripiprazole can lead to weight gain, so uh, watch the scales if that's important to you. Now, it's no secret that every drug has side effects, but the intensity of it is always dependent on the dose. By working with your prescriber, you can gradually get to a comfortable dose that is right for you by being effective while minimizing these side effects. Talk with your prescriber for more. Now, it is also good to know that you might need to try several medications before arriving at the medication or combination thereof that works for you. Usually, this can involve being on the drug for at least a month or two before following up with your doctor. Keeping track of how well you tolerate side effects and if it's working or not can especially help your prescriber assist you with making further decisions about your treatment options. While taking aripiprazole, you should seek out emergency help if you experience your mood getting worse or thoughts of harming yourself. Medications should be helping you, but not at the cost of what's important. If you do decide to stop taking aripiprazole, uh, be sure to not do so suddenly. Uh, withdrawal symptoms can occur when doing so, and I highly recommend talking to your prescriber about it first, so that everyone's on the same page, and so that your prescriber can assist you with slowly tapering down off of the medication. If aripiprazole does work for you, that's great! Just do be aware, though, about impulsive or risky behaviors that you might be uh, doing. This medication may intensify it and lead to unintended consequences if you're not mindful. And with that, on screen now is a quick summary of aripiprazole for you as a patient. Feel free to pause and take a screenshot for your reference or to share. Alright, let's move on to professional content. Bear in mind that this may be harder to understand if you don't have a medical or a scientific background. If you have any questions or are looking for medical advice, ask your local pharmacist or prescriber first, as they will have a more complete picture of what your situation is. If you are new to them and they don't know you that well yet, that's okay. It's never too late to make things up to date for the future. Now then, 
Aripiprazole is a second-generation antipsychotic with mechanisms of action centered around its mixed activity on dopamine and serotonin receptors. On label in the US, this is indicated for use in bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, major depressive disorder as an adjunct augment addition, Tourette's syndrome, and agitation associated with autism or the first two indications. Now, off-label, you'll find it useful for treating anorexia, borderline personality disorder, or antipsychotic-induced hyperprolactinemia. Hyper meaning high, prolactin meaning to promote lactation, and emia meaning presence in blood. High prolactin presence in blood. As always, it bears worth mentioning that the efficacy rates are not as well known for off-label usages, which is probably why most professionals only remember seeing Abilify in the context of bipolar disorder or schizophrenia. Besides the common adverse reactions listed on the patient section, aripiprazole boasts the typical extrapyramidal symptom profile we see in other antipsychotics. Ironically enough, anxiety, restlessness, and fatigue can be potential adverse reactions as well. On the more serious side of things, aripiprazole is definitely something to look out for when cardiovascular problems are in play. QTC prolongation is always a good one to remember in particular. Tardive dyskinesia can occur uh, as well in extended use of aripiprazole, again similar to other antipsychotics with similar mechanisms. NMS, seizures, and stroke are also possible outcomes to watch for. It should go without saying, then, that given the CV risk of this medication, it should be used in caution for that patient population. It also finds trouble with the elderly, making it onto the beers list, thanks to its antihistaminic effects. As for PK considerations, you'll want to titrate up with C3A4 inducers and walk it back down for 3A4 inhibitors. Individuals who are poor CYP2D6 metabolizers will also need to decrease their dosing. Alright, now for the big stuff. Aripiprazole carries a black box warning of suicidal thoughts and behavior in all ages, but particularly in young adults. This black box warning is common to most, if not all, antidepressants. On the other side of the timeline, another black box warning exists for dementia-related psychosis in the elderly. That being said, uh, neither of those are listed as hard contraindications in the appropriate section on the monograph. The only thing really listed is the usual hypersensitivity clause, which almost feels like a disclaimer sometimes. Next up, dosing. On screen now is the dosing table pulled from the FDA monograph. Feel free to pause or look this one up yourself to see if there are updated recommendations. There are some pediatric doses listed here, should the situation call for it. Alright, now that you've got your dose, let's take a look at monitoring. Well, as you can see, it's we're going to be using the classic does it work assessment, more or less, for your patients. Uh, regardless of what questionnaire you use, such as the PHQ-9 for depression or otherwise, ask them their thoughts on side effects, symptom resolution, and how they feel about the drug's impact on their lives. Adherence, or the barriers too, should also be particularly considered and addressed for this medication. As for the other side of the monitoring coin, safety involves monitoring anything pertinent at baseline and upon modifying therapy. Weight, and by extension BMI, may fluctuate upwards alongside risk factors for diabetes. And uh, while aripiprazole isn't strictly contraindicated for use in CV risk patients, you may want an ECG at baseline and onwards for the QT concerns, alongside the usual suite of CV concerns like blood pressure, of course. So let's talk aripiprazole's place in therapy. Overall, Abilify is a nice option to have, but has just about as much problems as the rest of its peers in its class. While second-generation antipsychotics are considered first-line agents in schizophrenia, especially in acute settings, they only have the edge over the first-generation ones by being relatively safer versions of similar extrapyramidal-based uh, safety profiles. This drug is also not a great option if your patient is elderly, as they'll hit that safety expiration date of Abilify as an option much sooner. Weight gain can also be a patient pain point to adherence and overall perception of medical treatment, especially if it comes as a surprise. Now, uh, on the other hand here, you'll also have to consider avoiding it when dealing with Q high QT intervals or cardiovascular concerns in general. Thankfully, though, Abilify doesn't need renal or hepatic adjustment outright. 
uh, with only a couple of PK interactions with SIP 2D6 and 3A4. Lastly, it's worth keeping an eye out on the new MySite dosage form. It does make Aripiprazole stand out as an option here, but it can create an accessibility barrier for those who are technophobic or otherwise technically illiterate. For now, that's all you need to know about Aripiprazole as a patient or a healthcare professional. Thanks for watching. This video was recorded in January 2022 and reflects the current state of knowledge as derived from the FDA official monograph for Airy Piprazole. My name is Ben Patrick. Subscribe to Riverside RX Services if you want to see more drug information videos from students like myself. And no matter what you're taking, take care of yourself out there.